Comfrey is a plant that I have been asked to do a video on for years now. I think every year I'm asked to either do a video on the plant itself, on the teas you can make with it, etc., and so forth. So today's video, I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to do the video on comfrey from a science-based perspective as to what it does, why we think it's special, whether or not you should use it, etc., and so forth. It's because I can only take so much internet harassment and it is a topic that people are incredibly passionate about, similar to like synthetic fertilizers or something like that. So let's keep those comments PG and get into the details. That is comfrey. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ashley. I have been working in the agricultural industry for around 15 years, and I have a degree in soil science. And I use that science to apply it to the garden in a fun, no pressure, no stress way. Do with that information what you will. But let's talk about the first thing we consider, or sounds like a scientific term, but really truly isn't. And that is called a dynamic accumulator. And that is often what comfrey is referred to as. So dynamic accumulator, the word and the definition for it is very prominent in like permaculture world and groups. So the idea of dynamic accumulator is that it is able to accumulate nutrients that normal plants are unable to access. So they have larger root systems that dig deeper into the soil, sometimes up to actually six feet in depth. And this in turn allows for them to access nutrients, which are then uptaken and put into the leaves. And once they're in the leaves, you can then use those leaves for redispersing nutrients that has been dug up from lower down in the soil profile, which in theory sounds very legit, but dynamic accumulator has no basis in science and actually is not a scientific definition in any capacity. So comfrey mining, essentially for lack of a better term for these nutrients is similar to, for example, clover mining for nitrogen out of the air. It's the idea that a plant has the ability to grab nutrients from a space that other plants can access. And this in turn gives you access to these nutrients in a stress-free organic way. Now, we've looked at biomass samples from comfrey. And if you did not know, you can dry down plant samples, grind them up into a fine powder, pop them in a machine, and that will actually spit out all the nutrients that are present in comfrey. And just like any plant, comfrey does have nutrients present in it. The leaves will contain nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron, all of it. It is no different than any other plant out there. Where it is different is the sheer biomass volume. So the volume in which it is able to accumulate biomass is much faster than any regular plant, which in turn means the amount of plant and the amount of nutrient then because of that amount of plant is higher. Now the idea that there is more nutrients down low or that the plant can even access this nutrients lower in the soil profile is kind of debated and not 100% set in stone. So a plant's ability to access nutrients really truly comes down to way too many variables to say with any level of confidence that yes, a six foot root system that's just dug down deeper will access the entire array of the 17 essential nutrients. And the reason for that is because things that play in like soil texture, environmental above ground factors, amount of water, soil pH, the history of the soil, all of these things will play into the plant's ability to take up and store said nutrients, much different. And from a soil science perspective, we do know that deep rooted plants are great for drought resistance. And that is why you can make drought resistant gardens and any plant we put in those spaces usually has a very deep tap root. We also know it's really good for stabilization of slopes. So in the world of reclamation soil science, we use deep-rooted taproot plants to actually secure slopes that have needed to be restored. There is nothing to indicate these plants with these deeper root systems are able to access nitrogen we otherwise wouldn't have access to. And therefore, just even from an economic perspective, if you will, we're not using comfrey to mine for nitrogen. We just continue to mine for nitrogen because, yeah, it's not, nothing special. 
Now the idea of using comfrey for fertilizer, whether it's a liquid tea or as some form of compost you top dress with, isn't necessarily a bad thing because of everything I said, because there is going to be the same amount of nutrients you would have if you were to compost all your tomato plants and use it for the next year. Comfrey is very quick at actually decomposing, which not all plants are. For example, a lot of brassicae plants or melons are very slow to decompose, whereas comfrey is very fast. So this in turn means your return on investment is much quicker. There's a high volume of biomass, which again is important if you have a large garden and you need to make a lot of biomass and a lot of compost because of that biomass and then when it is cut back it grows back so quickly that again it helps with that accumulation of biomass which helps with a larger value volume of whatever you need it for so unfortunately comfrey is not a nutrient panacea at all at any capacity it is like a normal plant it doesn't have excessive levels of anything beneficial or harmful for that matter. It isn't what we like to call a hyper accumulator in soil science or plant science, like we see with a number of other plants that are hyper accumulators. It is just a regular accumulator that grows incredibly quickly. So I'm sorry for completely bursting your bubble. What I will say is that it gives you a lot of, a lot of product really quickly and that in and of itself will translate into better, healthier, garden because you have way more compost very quickly broken down isn't going to have a lot of plant debris in it so it's not going to be pulling nitrogen out to help continue to decompose it so i would say it doesn't make a superior compost like physicality wise not chemistry wise yes 100% it does. And that actually might be why you see such great benefits when you use comfrey with your plants. Now, Geek Crew, you have to let me know in the comments down below. Do you like comfrey? Like I said, be your own garden scientist. Do not listen to everything that everyone says on the internet. If you want to use comfrey, use comfrey. It does not matter. If you want to use dandelions, use dandelions. If you want to use tomato leaves, use tomato leaves. There's no rules. There is no rules, shockingly enough. Who knows? You may just find the next anecdotal miracle cure to everything and you can patent it. I've been trying to do it for years now. Hopefully retire one day. One day I will. Anyways, Key Crew, I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.